हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ माध्यम आई एस माई नेम रवि त्रिपाठी टूडे विल डिस्कस द इम्पोर्टेंट करंट अफेयर आर्टिकल ओके तो लेट स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल रिलेटेड टू द इंडिया यूएस स्पेस कोऑपरेशन ओके ये ऑथर इज सेइंग दैट इंडिया एज यू ऑल नोज इंडिया हैज गुड रिलेशनशिप विद द यूएस इवन डेवलपिंग मोर एंड मोर गुड रिलेशनशिप यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ये ऑथर इज सेइंग दैट यस वी हैड हैंड सेक बट नाउ वी शुड मूव फ्रॉम हैंड सेक टू हग मींस वी शुड मोर नीड टू मोर स्ट्रेंथन आवर रिलेशनशिप आवर रिलेशनशिप so that in future we can develop a better prospect with a better relationship between the countries okay now what is the issue issue is the news is why because india and us agreeing to advance space collaboration in several areas okay as you all knows us have have had uh, its moon mission okay first person on the moon from the us i think all of you know that who was the first person who gave who moved so you can say tours in the space first person to tour in the space you can say outer atmosphere okay answer in comment section now come to the point as i already mentioned us had the first us was the first country whose person reach on the moon okay landed on the moon even in 1969 you can say okay in 70s even india even to do, do not have technology to reach out uh, reach in the space to move or you can say human mission india has not sent human in the space yes even one indian has visited in the space but not sent by the india it was sent by the uh, ussr okay that time so india has not sent any uh, human mission any human in the space because it need a different kind of technology okay so even india has planned to send its mission human mission known as the gaganyaan okay this will be india's first human in the space mission okay in the space means india is not going to send by this mission uh, human to the moon but yes to the space in the lower orbit in 400 km of height 300 to 400 km of height for 3 to 4 days okay 3 to 4 person you can say 3 person will visit in outer space and will remain 3 to 4 day to understand the atmosphere to understand how they can cope up the uh, this excessive atmosphere and also how our technology is working if we are planning to send our future mission future human to the moon then we need to develop first technology that human uh, our our uh, technology is good enough to sustain in the outer atmosphere okay so this is india's mission india predicted that we will send by 2024 even prior to it target was 2022 now to target 2023 but yes it will take till 2024 okay so what is uh, in this article author has discussed author said that india and us in space sector a better uh, collaboration can bring a critical and emerging technology for india okay which india needed because india do not have most of the technologies as, as i told you earlier us has sent human to the moon in the outer space even india is uh, struggling to send human in outer space okay so the collaboration can bring lot of opportunity for india okay for india it will help not only in the uh, uh, human mission but also in uh, also in different missions in, in this article author is also comparing the india and us in most of the matters but yes in here author is saying that india us civil space joint working group that was held in january 30 3031 we both are talking about the space development in the space technology okay most of the critical technology that us has will share with india okay india and us move, will work in collaboration so it will fetch lot of technology for india technology ka development for india and it can enrich the future prospect for india okay now 
what in this article discuss in november 2022 us kicked off is artemis program by launching orion spacecraft towards the moon and bringing it safely back to the earth okay artemis program is the us nasa's program nasa uh, european space agency jaxa and canadian space agency they all want to send a human mission again on the moon by 2024 okay remember this these facts are important altermis program is in collaboration with nasa european space agency jaxa and canadian space agency jaxa means ja japanese space aerospace okay so these four agencies will send this uh, altermis mission collaborate with nasa to send the human mission to the uh, moon again even the human mission to the moon was stopped uh after this integration of ussr after end of the cold war so now after long period of time the human are going to the moon by this mission altermis program nasa has tested in november 2022 its altermis program first second and it will now test third after it will send in 2024 human mission okay another big announcement made that this mission by this mission first woman and color person will visit to the moon color person i think i think most of you are about the non white person okay non white person is generally considered as color person mm -hmm. in the western country okay so this mission is carrying women and color person to the uh, moon so india could be could get benefits because india also plan gaganyaan by 2024 so it can fetch lot of uh, benefit for india if uh, we work uh, in work together so this collaboration can bring the Uh, can promote the technology sharing and also can help in uh, success of india's gaganyaan mission okay india also <coughs> could secure most of the uh, modern technology in the space sector uh, through us because us have much um, even much better than india in technology's point of view india need to develop okay if we compare the author is also saying that there is some challenges in the collaboration between india and us what are the challenges even we, when we compare about india and us then you can see us has upper hand in the uh, matter of technology development and most of the matter so how because you can say highest number of registered satellite us have india has limited number of satellite okay range of launch vehicle us have us has no range of launch vehicle even india have only you can say pslv gslv now ssl okay so we do not have range of space vehicle even we do not promote we we are taking step uh, in the to promote private sector in the space technology or space sector opening private sector space sector for private entities but in us and other countries even spacex launch is most of the mission private sector are uh, taking upper hand means they are working hand in hand with the government to promote the technology so they have lot of development private sector had grown uh, very fast in the western countries and they have developed even much better technology okay so uh, also it has planned to replace international space station by 2030 so this ultimately these all uh, in by these all point you can understand that india in technology if we compare india and us the technology in us has much us has much better technology than india okay so this is the asymmetry of capabilities and this ultimately lead to the some kind of you can say issues in the development of uh, relation between the two countries because when us also has want to have good relationship with india even most of the strategical point of view on the defense matter but in space matter if us looking for a pro future prospect then it us may also think what we are getting from india when we are providing technology and other benefit to india okay so the author is saying that these are the challenges that yes we can say that us has upper hand in technology and this is the major you can say a uh, challenge in the development of uh, uh, or you can say strengthening between uh, of the relationship between those two country but yes we have lot of opportunity even g20 summit and also quad member state another development between us and uh, india 
have opened lot of lot of opportunity for us and, uh, and india and also recently and civil uh, civil space agreement clearly opened the scope of technology sharing between these countries so ultimately this will benefit india this in this author also discussing the standard solution of long term collaboration sustain the engagement between the academics private sector and state led entity in the two countries okay so only not only government point of view but yes academic uh, transfer of academic transfer of research and development in collaboration in research and development sector and other sector uh, openings most of the sector to private players uh, may also bring lot of fruits to india and us also okay here author also discussing about the nasa isro's nisar mission okay this mission is very important mission why because nisar mission will uh, provide some high technology high resolution you can say it will use l band and s band both for the uh, resolution for the you can say uh, earth observation you can understand by the means that it can provide lot of benefit this mission is being launched in the nasa and isro cooperation is the first step in this direction and many more to come okay so author mentioned that yes even apart from this nasa and isro can develop more and more in different sector not only hum only human mission but also other space technologies are open for both the countries when we develop better and better relationship in this sector not only the uh, uh, government point of view but also uh, research and development we have good collaboration in academic sector we have good collaboration in the private sector then it will ultimately fetch lot of benefit for both of the for both countries okay so author is saying we should move towards the hands from handshake to hug okay okay that's it for this article now we'll discuss another article the demand for greater tipra land understand this tipra land you can understand what is the tripura means tripura you all know tripura is the indian state okay in uh, northeast region this state bordering to the bangladesh you can understand that tripura uh, somehow uh, tripura is like this and bangladesh is near about the tripura okay this area is bangladesh so when uh, tripura was formed most of the people even after 1947 when east pakistan and west pakistan was formed okay in 1947 and after that when east pakistan became bangladesh in 1970s uh, 1971 to 75 even most of the people in 76 to 77 moved toward india migrated to india okay to uh, avoid any kind of the life threat any kind of the security threat any kind and, and to secure them their life so they move towards india so lot of migration in india from the bangladesh region in tripura led the different kind of demand in tripura okay so most of the ethnic people in tripura ethnic tribes in people uh, in tripura means the people belongs to the tripura said that our representation is decreasing the job opportunities are decreasing for tripura people जो पीपल बिलोंगिंग फ्रॉम द त्रिपुरा एरिया इवन यू ऑल नो द त्रिपुरा कम्स अंडर द सिक्स शेड्यूल अंडर आर्टिकल टू फोर्टी फोर ओके इट हैज वन ऑटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक्ट डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल बट इवन आफ्टर दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द एरिया इन त्रिपुरा पीपल डिमांडिंग दैट द रिफ्यूज द माइग्रेट क्रेम इन त्रिपुरा क्रिएटेड लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस अल्टीमेटली लेट द डिमांड ऑफ त्रिपुरा लैंड ओके त्रिपुरा लैंड इज द डिमांड नॉट दे आर नॉट डिमांडिंग अदर कंट्री but they are demanding the states they said that tipura land should be carved out from the tripura so that the ethnic people living in the tripura okay they will get the proper representation in the government government employment educational institution proper uh, utilization of the government services and proper uh, uh, cultural and linguistic security may be secured for this person okay so this has been demanded in the tripura so here it is core ideology that of the tripura motha okay you can understand this is political organization developed with the this indigenous tribal group motha okay the objective is to carve out new state for 19 indigenous tribes okay these 19 indigenous tribes of tripura under article 2 and 3 okay so even most of the tribal areas indigenous tribal areas has been included in the 
autonomous uh, Tripura Autonomous District Council, but also this Tripura land demanding some other villages where Tripuras indigenous people of Tripura reside in the large number. Said that this council and other areas such villages where local people Tripuras okay are living should be carved out as a separate state so that the people moved migrated to Tripura from other countries particularly from Bangladesh and from other states such as the other states such as the from other countries such as the Myanmar move to the Tripura so they will get the proper representation in Tripura okay as you all know the parliament only has power to form a state okay under article 2 and under article 3 parliament can form new state under article 2 it allowed to form new state create new state and admit new state in the union okay so these two power admit new state and create new state comes under article 2 under article 3 provide that yeah change in the boundary of state or carving out the existing state means if you divide tripura into two states so it will it will come under the article 3 okay here tripura land if you the demand has been asked okay so the domestic uh, demand has been asked that tripura land should be formed and it can only be uh, done by the parliament parliament only has power this under article 3 68 it not considered a constitutional amendment particularly mentioned in 4 because this need only simple majority okay even states name cannot be changed by the state government it can it can only be changed by the parliament so under article 3 okay so this demand of tripura land created certain uh, insecurity for india security concern for india because if india considers any demand of separate state okay then ultimately it just can create lot of problem in future because most of the states governments such as the nagaland assam demanding the bodo land nagaland they are demanding separate demand in pa pakistan eh, sorry in punjab they are demanding separate demand okay in maharashtra they are, some people are asking the separate state so these demand can also rise with time so ultimately government should not consider this demand very uh, uh, on the priority but also think about the other substitute available okay here there is some genesis of the demand the demand form greater autonomy and power as i all know when the most people migrated to tripura it's reduced the number of local people in the tripura this ultimately you can see here according to the 1941 census the ratio of population of tribal and nine non-tribal in tripura was 50 50 but this ultimately reduced with time it reached 37 percent tribal people in uh, Tripura because most of the refugees came from the east uh, Pakistan this ultimately led created problem and the demand from the Tripura land was raised particularly get its voice in when 1979 the Tripura tribal area autonomous De De development council was formed autonomous development council as i told you comes under the sixth schedule under article 244 provide lot of lot of autonomy in the legislative and judicial matter to the particular district but local people okay so most of the parliament and state governments rule may not be applicable in this autonom or autonomous area without prior prior approval of this council okay so even after formation of this council the demand has not reduced and now the local people the some political organization intensifying the demand of the tripura land and they are saying that this is the time that we should get our separate state for our native people okay so this is uh, all mentioned in this article the tripura land demand has been made even for prelims point of view so remember it the tripura land demand from the tripura okay when tripura was carved out 1972 tripura was formed uh, as a separate state okay and also it comes under the sixth schedule of the constitution 244 tripura district council exists there and indigenous population decreasing because of refugees in means you can also mention all that the refugee migrant problem creating lot of disturbance in tripura uh, competition in the jobs and other resources so ultimately increasing the concept okay so now mammalian spread of h5 and one mammalian spread of h5n1 okay as you all know the h5n1 is the viral disease okay 
what you know h5n1 i think most of you know about h5n1 is the you can know by the avian influenza and also bird flu okay this disease generally found in birds but today the spread in the mammalian creating lot of problem okay as whole world recently even today recovering from the covid 19 pandemic okay so this mammalian crisis this h5s1 h5n1 sorry have lot of potential to become a future pandemic why because recently most of the bird has got infection means the avian influenza bird flu is increasing and mammalian spread is can become pandemic in future because you all know when any disease is spreading from one form to another form it is known as the spillover we see okay so virus can infect mammals from bird and in a phenomena called spillover means when one species suppose from bird to mammal known as the spillover okay what is zoonotic zoonotic means when any disease uh, affect from other animals species to human it known as a zoonotic disease so this is also the zoonotic disease because the human also got affected from this a subtype has caused the number of human infection also okay okay and h5n1's mortality is very high okay no you can say 53 percent volatility rate of h5n1 53 percent means if anyone suffer from h5n1 infection he or she may have 50 more than 50 percent chances that it he may or she may die because of this infection so this can create lot of problem in future the con the communicable the communication of uh, the disease is very easy because the birds are flying over you okay so they can excrete the excretion of the birds can spread the disease the uh, birds can sit a place sit in water bodies so it can contaminate the water bodies birds can contaminate the food bodies this ultimately can spread the number of disease and even in very short span of time this disease has potential to spread very large area because of the birds movement okay you cannot uh, even just stop the birds from moving okay so this is spillover and zoonotic disease and viral spread is creating lot of outbreaks and also can create leading toward the future outbreaks or pandemic risk in the future even the medicines are available against this okay but not particular medicines you can say are as effective as we think even vaccines are available for the birds but you cannot vaccinate all the birds one at a time at one time and some vaccines are not particularly effective for this strain okay so recently uh, recent example in this uh, author is saying that russia's captain sea coast in the 700 seals died it is possibility that these seals or seals are the, you know the mammals carnivorous mammals died because of the h5 s one it is possibility that they also infected because of this disease hence it is not only killing the humans but all uh, mammals dolphins lions also died by the cause of h5n1 in peru so this is risk that the most of the mammalian species most of the other animals species come on uh, come coming on the risk coming of the risk with the infection of uh, h5n1 and ultimately this can create lot of pandemic future pandemic for human okay because this disease has spillover characteristic and more and more and more spread opportunities in future create lot of uh, uh, catastrophe in future okay so as the transmission is very high okay so that this disease can become the future pandemic and past outbreak had been mentioned you should know about the history that it first cases were detected in 1996 okay in china in goose okay birds but first human case was in 1997 in hong kong in 2004 h5n1 reported in several countries in asia and new strain h5n1 named 2.3.4.4b emerged in 2020 is rapidly spreading across the asia africa and european countries okay so 
this time the most of the countries need to think in uh, cooperation they need to be cooperative in taking steps to take prevention of this kind of disease so the future pandemic may be avoided okay this has been mentioned by author now next article how is government ramping up border infrastructure this article only providing some information has been provided by our foreign external minister okay so this article is uh, i can say that only explaining the what development we has made over the uh, our borders our sensitive borders such as in the ladakh and arunachal pradesh even this information has not been asked in the parliament but our external affairs minister s jayashankar released the detail even without asking released the detail in parliament without any question about this and also without any press conference he released the detail in the parliament okay even this timing is particularly significant why because few week before the visit of the chinese foreign minister foreign minister is going to visit india uh, on march 1st and 2 1st and 2nd march so prior to the visit of the foreign minister of the china our external minister released the detail about the uh, infrastructure development in the border region is really raising uh, some kind of question for the intent of the external affairs minister it focus of initiative of north and east india's you can say 3488 km border with china line of control or lac including other ladakh himachal pradesh uttarakhand sikkim arunachal pradesh as well as in bangladesh bhutan nepal and myanmar okay so in this you just need to remember some fact that what has been mentioned for a prelims examination government said that length of road constructed in the china border area is period from 2014 to 2022 is 6806 km okay almost the double the length constructed in constructed from 2008 to 14 okay in between these 8 to 14 we constructed only 3610 km roads on the border areas with the china but now in 14 to 22 we had developed 6806 km road on the border with china uh, our border with china okay the report lies dozen of project in the neighborhood such some involved major outlets such as the railway link of nepal and bangladesh okay mahakali motorable bridge maitri setu between tripura and bangladesh galadan multimodal transit uh, transport project which include a five 158 km waterway and sitri airport project the road to mizoram okay means ye, this project will go from indian uh, land port to through bay of bengal to mizoram okay you can say and uh, even myanmar sitwe airports the, it it will provide the route to the north east india, uh, india also okay so this projects has been discussed nothing more but yeah you should remember that this project this project mentioned by this this mahakali motorable bridge and maitri setu between tripura and bangladesh remember this this bridge located in tripura and bangladesh okay and also this uh, kaladan multimodal transit project between india and myanmar okay for east north east connectivity it also speaks south asia's first cross border petroleum product pipeline between motihari in india and amlek amlek ganj in nepal so remember this south asia pipeline located between motihari in india and amlek ganj nepal another high speed diesel pipeline with bangladesh that will reduce petrol price and congestion and also bhutan is dry port in uh, pasakha bordering west bengal being developed under the indian government grant so remember these fact only because these uh, facts are important for the prelims examination in mains examination when we discuss about the india channel relationship and border infrastructure we will discuss all the topics in detail okay okay thank you for watching today's lecture thank you